Hello, my friends. Welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jim. And as a photographer, I want to move the light around in my images. I go out and shoot and I come home and there are definitely things you can do in the field when you're taking the photo by learning your camera and all that in order to make sure you expose as properly as possible. But you don't always do that, do you? I know I don't. And so what I want is to come home and basically massage the light, move the light around, basically show the light that I'm the boss um, in post-processing. And so today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to show you how I come in and I say, I want the light to do this, but maybe I don't have a lot of time or maybe I don't have the understanding of all the right tools. And so I'm going to show you the different tools that I use to do that. And in fact, there are five tools that I primarily use, and there's a million ways to like skin a cat, as the old expression goes. But I'm going to show you five ways that I go about moving the light. One of them is the primary, the major, I think the best way to move the light around. The other four are what I call like refinement moves. Let's get going. I've got an image here, and uh, this is very typical. Um, both the subject matter, which is just kind of some random stuff in a city with a beautiful sunset that I was in no position to shoot, unfortunately. But I saw an old truck and uh, just, I don't know, like Americana street kind of cities, kind of a quiet night. I like those kind of shots. Anyway, I've got this photo and tool number one is develop uh, because there's a lot of power here and a lot of control. However, I think there are certain things you want to be aware of and you want to make sure you either do or don't do in order to get the light looking just right. Um, depending on the image, you could lift the exposure, but, but this is a big but, and an image like this, it's not what I would do simply because as the name implies, exposure, you're lifting the exposure, that's, it's not uh, specific enough. It's lifting every bit of it and it's all getting brighter, which means those bright parts in the sky are really getting blown out. So that is a way to do it if your image is really dark and that's a good place to start. But on an image like this where it's reasonably dark in the foreground, but not really bad in the sky, then, you know, in other words, I expose for the sky here, which means my foreground is darker. Um, I would prefer to come in and do highlights and shadows. And so this is really the first thing I do is I come in here and of course, lifting the shadows will give you a lot more visibility into those darker areas, right? Because they're in shadow. What I often find is that I'm doing that in combination with a negative move on highlights. And as you can see here, I've quickly taken the photo from that to that. And that just looks a lot cleaner and frankly better. Now, having said that, the other section that you may want to look at is blacks and whites. Now, if I lift the blacks, you can see that's bringing up some of those darker areas, but note that it doesn't bring up as much of them as the shadows does. And consequently with whites, you can either lift those and get some brightness there or pull it down. But again, it's not going to have quite the same effect as highlights. And so what I recommend is doing bit of a combination of the two. So lift shadows, maybe pull down highlights a little bit, take a look at the blacks and see where you want to go. I'm going to go a little bit higher on the blacks, maybe a little bit lower on the whites, and I've got a lot more balanced light across my photo. And here's one thing to think about when you do that, and that is, hey, guess what? I've just balanced the light. I've evened out the distribution of light across this entire photo, which is exactly what I wanted to do. However, there's a small problem, a very small, very easy to fix problem. And that problem is in doing so, when you have flat light like that, you don't have any contrast. And I think contrast can make or break a photo. So I typically come back with smart contrast after doing moves like that, and I will bump that up. You don't have to go significantly, but it's basically accentuating some of the difference between bright and dark, which I know, Jim, you just talked about leveling out the light. And I did, I tend to level it out, but then I'll come back and add contrast. In other words, I don't want it to be perfectly flat, but I start with a flat canvas, so to speak, and then add back contrast until it basically suits my taste. So if you look at the before, pretty uh, pretty dark in the foreground and you know not so bad in the sky, and then the after, it looks a lot better in both places, I think. So that's something to think about and to keep in mind. Now, while we're on the develop tool, there's a whole other section of this called curves. Curves is a massively powerful tool, and in fact, I did a video about it, which you can check out there if you want to. I'm happy to come back and do another follow-up video on curves, maybe just around the light as opposed to the color, but there's a lot you can do here. But this bottom little dot represents a shadow. So if I pull it like this, hey, guess what happens? All the shadows get darker. So if you ever see a silhouette image or you want to create a silhouette, start here. 
basically. That, uh, that's a great way to do it. Now conversely, I can lift those shadows. However, you will notice that my photo starts to get flat. Hey, here's another idea. If you ever wanted to make a vintage kind of faded look, start by doing that because I'm just flattening out the light and taking away all that contrast and that's creating a flatter overall look, which is kind of that vintage or faded look. Anyway, that's not why we're here. Um, the opposite is also true, which is highlights up here. So I can lift those or I can pull those down. And uh, in the midtones, I can drop a point here and scoot that up to lift the midtones. I can drop points anywhere along this line and move things. If they're further down to the bottom left corner, I'm going to lift more of the darker parts. If they're further up here to the right corner, I'm going to be increasing or decreasing kind of the highlight points. And so that deserves a video all on its own. I just wanted to point out it's incredibly powerful and what I'll often do is use some of all of that on an image simply because it gives you so much power and control and flexibility and it's worth doing so that is the base way that I approach adjusting the light in my photos now I said there's a primary way that I approach it which is develop tool and then there's four other things that I do that I think are great add-ins for lack of a better word that help refine or accentuate the light the first one I'm sure you'll know that that is accent AI and I'm gonna go to a hundred and honestly on most photos you go to 100 it doesn't look that good because what uh, accent AI does is quite a few things it does adjust the light which is great and which is why I'm showing it here but it also pops contrast um, and it pops color and you can just see that things have shifted quite a bit you're seeing a lot more intensity in that color because of the shift in the light values and the contrast and all those kind of things keep that in mind what I usually recommend is do your develop stuff first save accent AI as a little bit of an accent uh, towards the end of your edit. Some photos like this one, it actually kind of works here as uh, going to 100, which I would never really do, um, and using it by itself, it actually kind of works, but it's not something that I recommend on most photos. Now, the next tool that's incredibly useful at moving the light around is Super Contrast, and I'll just give you an example here. And now I have reset everything and developed, so I'm doing this without develop first. I don't recommend that. I just want to show you the power of super contrast by itself. However, I do use it as a refinement tool in addition to what I do in develop. The bottom line here is super contrast isolates the three tonal areas, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, and allows you to adjust contrast and the balance in each of those tonal areas. And the balance is where it really comes in handy. So I've put both of them about middle, you know, roughly at around 50. And you can then come into the balance in each one. And you can see as you move the balance, like the balance going to the right and highlights brings back a little bit more of that color and that look in those clouds, which I like. Midtones. Uh, there's a lot of midtones that's kind of hitting the sky. If I go to the right, it's kind of pulling that down. So I might lift that a little bit, but the shadows is the one that's going to have a huge impact here because it's pretty dark already and there's a lot of shadow, which is one of the reasons I'm using this as an example photo. If I drag the shadow balance to the right, I'm getting a lot darker, deeper shadows. Pull it to the left on the balance and that's gotten a bit brighter. But if I increase the amount of that shadows contrast and couple that with a negative 100 balance, I get a really uh, nice look to that foreground. So again, 100 is not really a number I recommend using on a lot of filters. Pretty rare would I do something like that. I went to 100 simply because I didn't include develop first I, because I wanted to show you how super contrast works. But keep that in mind that, again, this is a refinement tool, the way I look at it, and use it in combination with what you do in develop first. So develop first and then other stuff second. Let me hit reset, and we're going to go down to Relight AI. And this is a newer tool here in Luminar Neo that separates the ability to basically brighten or darken the uh, near section of the photo or kind of the far section of the photo. In this case, I will go near to 100. It lightened up a very thin sliver of that foreground. And so I always find, 100% of the time, I always find that I'm taking the depth and I'm basically going pretty far with depth too. And there you go. I've now got a lot better visibility into that overall foreground that was in deep shadow. So there it is, deep shadow, and there it is with brightness near, meaning foreground, all the way to 100, and depth, meaning where is that line that's splitting the what they consider the foreground and what they consider the background or the near and the far? Where is that line? And when you go to depth 100, you can see it goes to about um, essentially 
almost the middle of the photo. I would say at least the top, excuse me, the bottom third to, to, to 40, 30 to 40% of the photo. I think you get what I'm saying. So um, it's helpful. Again, an accent tool, in my opinion, a refinement tool, and one that comes in super handy. And the last tool that I use as a refinement tool is Dodge and Burn, which allows you to go in and selectively with a brush to just go in and either uh, lighten or darken specific parts of the photo. So in this case, I want to lighten. So I click on lighten. Uh, size, size is pretty good. Softness, I'm going to go really soft, which means it's kind of fades on the edge. It's not a hard edge. And I'll just go strength to 100 just to show you what it does. But as I start painting over this with my brush, you can see what it's doing to the photo. I'm basically just lifting the exposure wherever I paint. And so this is giving me the ability to come in and just basically selectively brighten that part of the photo. I always recommend using develop first, but in this case, I, I didn't simply because I wanted to show you the power of Dodge and Burn. It's lightened it pretty well, but it's something that I would use kind of not sparingly, but I would gently use it not to strength of 100. Usually I start at like strength of 15 uh, in order to brighten or darken a spot in the photo, maybe even 10 or 12, uh, but I tend to start pretty low. But in this case, I showed strength of 100 simply because I didn't do anything in develop first. Uh, but that's how Dodge and Burn works. And of course, I could do the same thing if I wanted to perhaps darken the sky. I might come in and let's see here. I'm going to go strength a lot lower and I'll make my brush bigger. And maybe we'll just darken the sky a little bit right up in there. Pretty light overall, not much. Um, I kind of like the sky the way it is, to be honest. So I don't want to do very much. But if you look at the overall with what Dodge and Burn has done to my photo, there it is. You can see in that section, that lower kind of half of the sky, it's a little bit brighter. And of course, the foreground's darker. And those things are slightly swapped now. It's a little bit, little bit slightly darker in that part of the sky and of course, uh, quite a bit brighter in the foreground. So that's Dodge and Burn and how I use it. But again, the key for me is start with Develop and then use one of these four refinement tools, Accent AI, Super Contrast, Relight AI, or Dodge and Burn to basically refine uh, and massage the light and get it looking exactly the way you want it to look. That's how I go about controlling light in Luminar Neo. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Comments down below, questions, feedback, thumbs up, all those kind of things. Let me know what you think about this. I'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching, my friends. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, I think you really enjoyed that video about Luminar Neo as well. Take care of yourselves, my friends. I'll see you soon. And until then, adios.